Frontier Seattle was a place where you could come and reinvent yourself, a place where you could start fresh. Today in the Mossback's Den, we're going to talk about a man who came to Seattle as a refugee from Civil War politics and wound up becoming mayor. His name was Beriah Brown, and he became a prominent Seattle citizen, one of the most extraordinary people, according to the Seattle Times, the city had ever hosted. He served on the University of Washington Board of Regents, and eventually, in 1878, he was elected mayor of Seattle. But Beriah Brown had a past. He was a Democrat, a Southern sympathizer. He was pro-slavery. Uh, he was a white supremacist. He attacked Abraham Lincoln in newspaper editorials. And he wanted to start an all-white colony in Sonora, Mexico. During the Civil War, federal authorities suspected Beriah Brown of being the head and center of a secret society and spy ring on the West Coast called the Knights of the Columbian Star. They believed that they were trying to undermine the Union's authority in the state of California. Brown was a newspaper man through and through. He worked for many papers. As a young man in New York State, he worked on a newspaper with the famous New York editor Horace Greeley. Of course, they were just young men and roommates at the time. They struck up a friendship even though they disagreed very much politically. Horace Greeley stayed east, but he exhorted young men to go west, and Beriah Brown listened to him. And eventually, at the outbreak of the Civil War, he found himself in California, where he worked for a number of newspapers. In his newspaper editorials, Brown railed against uh, abolitionists who he called brainless dirt eaters. Uh, he worried about the mongrelization of America, and he attacked Abraham Lincoln as a terrible despot. Pro-Union newspapers had a few words for Beriah Brown. They called him a treason shrieker, a snake in the grass, and Beriah the liar. Things came to a head on April 15, 1865, when word of Lincoln's assassination arrived in San Francisco. Brown was then editing a newspaper called the Daily Democratic Press that was virulently anti-Lincoln and anti-Union. A crowd gathered, they ransacked the office, they burned the newspaper, and Beriah Brown's personal library of some 20,000 books in the middle of the street. He was afraid he would be lynched, and he fled the city. After leaving San Francisco, Brown worked his way north into Oregon and eventually Washington State. At first, he worked for newspapers that were anti-Reconstruction, where he continued his railing on race. But by the time he got to Washington State, he tired of the political sectional politics of the Civil War and Reconstruction, and he seemed to want to reinvent himself. He worked his way to Olympia and then to the little town of Seattle, which was just starting on Puget Sound. There, he started the first daily newspaper in the city, the Puget Sound Dispatch, which eventually morphed into the Seattle Post Intelligencer. Once in Seattle, people occasionally referred to his rebel past, but essentially the city was fairly forgiving. He called himself an exponent of progress and he put the politics of the Civil War behind him and embraced the new city in front of him. He did find a new villain, however, socialism. When Bri Brown died in 1900, he was lionized by the newspapers of the region. He was remembered as a man whose virtues were many and his heirs were few, as one colleague put it. Perhaps that's true if one chooses to forget the past in an ambitious frontier town. If you know somebody who's come to the Pacific Northwest to reinvent themselves or forget the past, and you think it'll make a good story, drop us a line.